Uh, wildness is about our passion. It's about our spark. It's about honoring all of who we are. It's about remembering all of who we are. Sorry, the translation between PowerPoint and Keynote made this happen a little bit. It's cool. It's a little wild, right? <laughs> uh, and the other thing I think about when I think about wild is a little bit strange. It's silence. And perhaps this association will help with that. And um, it's because we can't, uh, we can't really engage with all of who we are unless we pay attention to all of who we are. And silence is pretty helpful for that sometimes. So what I'd like to do is just spend a little bit of time being quiet. And then I'm going to break the silence with a song that I wrote called Remember Me. And it's a song that is about honoring all of who we are, remembering right, parts of us. And um, it's also kind of dedicated to people who can't do that anymore. So um, what I would do if I were in your shoes is I would sit and I would watch my breath and close my eyes. But you can do whatever you wish with your silence. Um, I'm going to probably just set up a guitar here a little bit and then start singing. Met a man, he was lying down. I was his only guest for weeks. Every day he asked me, Who are you? Sometimes he held my hands. He said, I'm decaying inside out. I try to turn my head away He said you've been doing that Every moment of your life So please don't hide your eyes Today He said Tell me oh, Please remember me No one else Knows who I am what I'm meant to be And so please Remember me I'm not one Kumbaya I'm not one Sentimental a sighing, but now I realize I'm dying. I've not been living, not even trying. He said to me, Oh, please remember me. He no one else knows who I am or what I'm meant to be. So Better man, I was lying down. 
I was my only guest for weeks. Every day I asked me, who are you? And sometimes I held my hand and I am, I'm decaying inside out. I try to turn my head away, but I've been doing that every moment of my life. So I'll not hide my eyes today. said to me mm -hmm. please remember me if no one else knows who I am or what I meant to be or something So much wild, we can't, we don't know what to do with it. So I want to just make a distinction that's going to make wild make more sense, I think. And that is the distinction between simple, complicated, and complex. Simple is baking a cake. Complicated is building a rocket, believe it or not. And complex is raising a child. <laughs> so the simple and complicated stuff, we can handle that. We can handle with rules, habits, which are internal brain rules. We could think about it that way, right? Scripts. Manuals, blueprints, that's great stuff for rockets. Anybody got a manual for raising a child? <laughs> Jeez. So, well, they asked for PowerPoint, so they got it. <laughs> so this merely makes the point that life is complex. <laughs> Unpredictable. <clears throat> and the question is, really, how do we handle that, right? It can change on a dime. This is my son, three years old, birthday. This is him about two months later, diagnosed with leukemia. The point is that shit happens, right? And it happens all the time. How do we handle that? So I want to just review quickly how we do not handle that, where the wild things aren't, OK? They are not in the terms and conditions of iTunes agreements online that go on page after page after page. It continues for another 60 screens. I actually cut all these out. Can you believe that? Just for you, just so I could say there's 60 of them. And somewhere along the way, check this out, they advise us to take frequent breaks when viewing the screen. <laughs> now, presumably, this, this is how long it takes. Have you heard about this? If you were actually going to read, right, all the privacy statements that you sign just because you're online and you, know, you need to use your stuff, it takes 76 work days to read all of them, which is about 15 work weeks. I think I have that up here. That's presumably without taking those frequent breaks that's buried <laughs> deep in the, the bowels of the agreements. And of course, you know, from my point of view, this happens all over the place. These systems, these rules, they're supposed to be efficient. They're supposed to help us get through our day. And I'm not so sure that's how I feel about a lot of these manuals, these systems, these electronic things. You can decide uh, for yourself. Your call is important to us. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the Spanish requirement. You don't get to know who wrote it there. Um, by the way, I, I just want you to know I did check the PowerPoint on my own machine. It didn't do this, so OK. So, this is true. In the 16th century, the Spanish had this requirement, which was when you get to the shores of a new place, you read these 400 words to these people who don't speak Spanish. 
in Spanish. We ask and require you that you consider what we have said to you, but if you do not do this, we will make war against you and slaves of you. Has anybody read Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? Where they, right? Like they, they decimate the, the Earth, and they're like, what? We told you about the bypass. It's like, it's like in quadrant three of Andromeda four or something. Why didn't you look at it, you know? So there's this book these two law professors wrote about this phenomenon. They focused on mandated disclosure. And here's their conclusion. So, and I'm using this as sort of a proxy, right? For systems that are unrealistic. We're not robots. We have to, I have to go to the bathroom. And occasionally I get sick. That's very inconvenient sometimes for a system, but it's true. Anyway, they concluded that mandated disclosure is everywhere, fails wildly, widely, cannot be fixed, and causes harm. Well, sign me up for some of that. <laughs> it accomplishes so little that eliminating it would deny few people anything. <laughs> uh, OK. And they suggest for unfamiliar and complex decisions, anybody, anybody making unfamiliar complex decisions in their life these days? People want opinions and advice. They want a relationship. And probably not that kind of relationship. I, I'm over here, Doc. <laughs> over here. Or this one. This is supposed to be a happy one. This is like what I Googled. And they're looking at the computer still. I'm thinking they want more like that one. You know. So wild wisdom, the art of showing up. Life gives us the full continuum, doesn't it? From pleasant emotion to unpleasant emotion. And notice that I'm being very careful not to call it positive and negative. Why? If I go down a dark alley and I'm scared and I run the other way and it saves my life, that's a very positive thing from my point of view anyway. Right? So pleasant and unpleasant emotion is what we're talking about here. Life gives us the full continuum. And, and when I'm talking about this, I want us to think about a relationship with ourselves, right? knowing ourselves, but also a relationship with others, spouses, uh, patients, etc. cetera. Because okay? this whole thing applies to both. And in fact, I would say, you cannot have an intimate relationship with someone else if you don't have an intimate relationship with yourself. OK. Anyway, we feel pleasant emotion when we're in agreement or when there's compatibility with ourselves. Boy, Donald, I want to be smart. You are smart. Oh, great. I feel pleasant emotion, right? <laughs> and of course, if I feel like an idiot, that doesn't feel so good. OK, and the same thing with my wife. <laughs> If there's disagreement and incompatibilities between us, it doesn't feel good. What is that called? It's called unpleasant emotion. Now, I'm claiming something pretty bold here. I'm claiming that our culture, writ large, certainly mine where I grew up in, is an avoidance culture. 90% of us were trained that the way to handle this full continuum is through avoidance. That's my claim. Okay. And here's what I mean. Distraction, denial, suppression, self-medication, letting it go, letting it go, positive thinking, as if I really, oh, I didn't think about it. You mean I should just think I want to portion my driveway? Well, OK, I'll just do that. My claim here is that we need the full continuum of strategies to deal with the full continuum of life. And I would call those other strategies intimacy strategies. And they're weird. <laughs> They are countercultural. At least in my culture, they are. And what I would call these intimacy strategies this is pretty bold, right? Dealing with reality skillfully early and often. That's what it is. Why do we not do that? Because when we go over here to unpleasant emotion, we go, run away. We avoid it. So that's why he's holding his arms out, because it's to hold the full continuum here. Anyway, this is this first quadrant down here. This is light and easy. It's Disneyland. It's how we get through cocktail parties. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? Oh my gosh, wasn't he so nice? She was so nice. What did you talk about? We talked about the weather and the Packers. And, and then I had a really awful conversation because somebody talked about the Bears. And you know what happened then? What happened then is silence and violence. Because that's the continuum of, of behaviors we have when something feels unpleasant, and we can't use intimacy, and we can't go run back to Disneyland. 
So the claim I'm making is, if all we have is avoidance strategies, these are your options. Marriage always starts here. <laughs> Anybody here have any, have any experience with the relationships? You tell me, I want to raise your hand if you're 100% compatible with the love of your life. So guess what? <laughs> you're going to end up here at some point, and the question is, what do you do then? Run away. <laughs> right. Right. I just got my midlife crisis car. It's a Mazda 3, and it's red. It's seriously, that's what I just did. And it's like, this is what people do, right? They go have, like guys, right? They'll go have an affair, and they'll get the, the convertible, right? And they'll, they'll just go back to Disneyland, thank you very much, because this is too intense. So I'm recommending that, I guess. <laughs> so all right. So, so first quadrant, I would call that sugar. I would call the second quadrant lemons. It makes sense? And you know where it's, where it's coming, but check this out. Here's an ER doc. He just lost a 19-year-old patient. You've seen this. It went viral, right? OK, so you know the story, maybe. So I'll tell it just in case. He lost a 19-year-old patient in the ER. And, and look where he's gone to uh, do a very human thing, which is to be sad about it, right? He went outside. So the rule in our culture is, I mean, at least here, right, is if you're feeling unpleasant emotion, that's okay, but could you just maybe, you know, go away, please, right? And then the other thing that happens is being professional often means, as in this case, that we should return to work with our heads held high. What's that? That's light and easy, right? That's that quadrant we're talking about, light and easy. That's not being fully human, right? Like, if we have to, like, cut ourselves apart and the unpleasant stuff goes here and the pleasant stuff goes here, that's not being whole. All right, so this is being fully human, and I would call that lemonade. Now, of course, it's a, a juxtaposition to people say, well, if life gives you lemons, make lemonade. And they never quite say exactly how to do that with things like real problems. Because lemonade is easy to make, right? You take sugar and you take lemons, and you, you know, everybody knows how to make lemonade. But when it comes to feeling unpleasant emotion, right, and being intimate with it, that is, seeing it, knowing it, speaking your truth skillfully early and often to somebody else, don't sign me up for that kind of lemonade, thank you very much. <laughs> you know? So I would also call this, this the blissful dead. <laughs> the wild and their victims. Right? Because wild is not necessarily a good thing. Our, our culture is very good at talking about this. Um, and then the wise wild goes up in that quadrant. I want to talk briefly about control. Boy, do we love control in our culture. Okay? Rules, you could read habits, must be strictly followed and read, by the way. Okay? And why? It relates to the just world hypothesis. Because bad things don't happen to good people following the rules. If you follow the rules, everything's going to be OK. That's not true. That's not true. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great, though? I mean, the, the 10 steps to a life that's OK? So I would say this quadrant is domesticated, tamed. And check out this word, 8,000 years of PR, civilized. <laughs> Wild is violence. I'll control you. Or silence, you won't control me. It's one way of looking at this. So wild wisdom, in our culture, it's radical and unusual. And here's what I think it is. It's dealing with reality early and often and skillfully. The rules are guidelines requiring discernment. Uh-oh, record scratch. What? Discernment? You want someone to actually use their judgment about this? We don't trust people to do that. Are you kidding me? Make a discernment? My wife's in the hospital with my son, and she can't get a Tylenol because she's not the patient. So then a risky nurse has to go steal a Tylenol and give it to my wife, right? Well, that's discernment. That's the right thing to do, but she's going to get fired for it maybe. I don't know. I hope that's not true, but that was literally an experience we had. I'm not going to tell you her name. <laughs> How do you discern things? You pause and you be present to all of the data in the current moment. All of the data. How do we receive data? Our body, our emotions, and our mind. So you just be present to it, and then you can navigate things appropriately. Does that mean you're a god and everything's going to go OK? No. <laughs> it just means you're doing the best you can as a human being. That's it. That's what I mean by saying knowing and honoring all of who we are. That's a whole me. And it's actually not that separate from a whole we, because I have to be paying attention to you as I do this. 
Anyway, and that is nothing separate to dealing with reality skillfully early and often. So that was it, except for one more song. Um, and I'll sing that for you, and then we'll go on. All right. I have a little bit of futzing to do here. The laser light show was, was also done on a Mac, so. <laughs> Setting up because it's nice to end with the song. Any questions about it? <laughs> oh, yeah. Nope. Oh, sorry. Hi. Yeah, sure, yeah. I mean, it's this bold hypothesis that to solve problems, you have to actually know what they are. You know? Yeah, and accept. So the, the, the gentleman over here asked about acceptance and commitment therapy. Um, you know, if you want, I mean, again, so just to repeat, I mean, it's like if you don't accept reality, um, I don't know, you're at a disadvantage, is my hypothesis, is all. Yeah. Yeah, I knew someone was going to Well, I knew if we had time, someone was going to ask that. Um, so here's, here's actually the hard part, is that it doesn't look like anything, I don't think. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. The question was, what does wild wisdom look like? Like, come on, dude. I mean, she didn't say this, but give us some concrete stuff to work with here. And the problem is it's sort of like, what would be it like? It would be like, um, I asked, someone left my office the other day, and she said, give me, can, I just, can you just tell me how to deal with my mom? I said, could you just tell me how to speak Chinese? You know what I mean? So this is actually a fluency thing. So what I actually really believe is that if you show up and you turn the knob of that, you know, that room and you bring the grief from the 19-year-old in with you and you choke up with your patient, not because you're thinking this is a good manipulative thing to do to get close, but because that's who you are, and then you say, oh my god, I'm sorry, I need a minute. Right? And you pause. And you take a breath. Now, this isn't an ER, obviously. I mean, this is, it depends on the situation, but this is the whole point. That will affect everything else, right? I mean, it just will. You're in a dance together. So then the other person says, I can't believe you're such a jerk for crying, right? And you say, Well, tell me more about that. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like it's a dance. Um, so I actually really do think you're all very smart. Um, I mean, some of you aren't. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and if you can be aware and follow your own compass and follow the data of the situation, that's really what I'm talking about here. But the problem is I'll spend like months talking to people about this, like in a, in a session, because they don't, people don't believe it. They're sort of like, well, what do you mean follow? What, you know what I mean? I'm like, well, OK, here's some general guidelines. I have a little empathy dialogue card game I play with people. But, but still, at the end of the day, it gets more and more subtle and more and more of a dance. So uh, did someone? Yeah, so I, I apologize. I mean, I, I'd love to talk to you afterwards if you wanted to, or yeah. Oh, sorry, yes, he's great. He's 10, and he's alive and well. <laughs> I forget to say that. <laughs> And he's alive and well because of uh, research and because of medical science and because of um, sharing data nationally so we can actually get our ends and find out what works. So a deep bow to that system. Yeah, thank you. Sorry for, thank you for, yes. I know, I get those flipped too. I don't know what to call it. Yeah, go ahead. There's, there's a book that, that's called Crucial Conversation. It's kind of a businessy book. So they come at it from a Fortune 500 company perspective. And what it looks like is a whole culture that says we want to know what's actually happening. So if you have, you know, if the power persons in the room aren't signed on, that everybody's going to crawl and hide, which they should do, right? 
So, but if the power person is saying, look, really, let, let, tell me if this idea is bad, tell me if you're feeling terrible, and they're modeling that, I think you could probably start to create a culture where, I mean, there's so much um, bullpucky that we have to go through. Like this idea that strength, you know what I mean, what strength is, uh, is, is a huge one, right? So if we can start to develop a culture that says that that's actually brittleness, not strength, right? To shove it down and shove it down and shove it down, especially in the long run. And what I didn't say is avoidance strategies work in the short run. They're good. They're, they're not bad strategies. It's just they're not complete. Yeah, so. OK, so I'm going to go a little over, but uh, is that all right? OK. <coughs> <clears throat> yeah, your mouth dries out up here. No, no, it's okay. I'm okay. It is dry, though. I got some bubble gum and tight blue jeans. I got starlight in my eyes. My head is full of diamond rings. I don't know nothing about planetary things. But when I'm quiet enough, I hear the canary sing. We need another Jesus. We need another Mother Jones. We need another Buddha. And Rosa Parks, we need another Rumi. We need another Gertrude Stein. We need you. We need me. We need we. I know tractors. I can fix most anything. My dad's a tracker. He can light a fire in the pouring rain. I don't know nothing about planetary things But I know family sticks together In any kind of weather And we're all family We need another Jesus We need another Mother Jones We need another Buddha And Rosa Parks We need another Rumi We need another Gertrude Stein We need you We need me We need we Forever loyal, you will never tread on me. Don't worry about peak oil, my veins are full of gasoline. I don't know nothing about planetary things. But in this foxhole, I can hear the canary sing. We need another Jesus. We need another Mother Jones. We need another Buddha. And Rosa Parks, we need another Rumi. We need another Gertrude Stein. We need you. We need me. We need we. As I look upon this silent screaming street, I see a ghost with shadow scars. One by one, at first there's just a few got their hearts in mason jars they start to glow deep and red and slow until we're blazing like a billion mighty stars my hat is backwards i got my pants down to my knees my family tree's got bullets for its canopy of leaves but you're my brother so take shelter from this storm don't understand a word you say, but a bond is being formed. We need another Jesus. We need another Mother Jones. We need another Buddha. And Rosa Parks, we need another Rumi. We need another Gertrude Stein. We need you. We need me. We need we. We need you. We need me. We need you, we need me, we need you, we need me, we need you, we need me, we need we.